Hello and welcome to This Is. When it comes to AI, Microsoft hasn't even scratched the surface. Oh, you got the surface button in there. Yeah. That was well yeah, done. Was I just attended the Microsoft Surface event where they introduced a couple new things, mainly their new AI-based integration with Windows called Copilot. I was unfortunately unable to attend, so you're going to have to fill me in. Now, I saw that there are a number of new surfaces. So there's a new Surface Go 3, a Surface Laptop. Sorry, Surface Laptop Go, not to be yep. confused with the Surface Go or the Surface Laptop. Can you run me through what new surfaces were announced? So only two things were announced, and it wasn't all that new. It was just okay. like actual spec bumps for existing lines. Okay. The Laptop Go 3 now. So it just has a generational spec bump, but it's the same chassis, same screen. Okay. But the big thing there is... One of the things we knocked it for last time was that the base model had only four gigs. Quattro, no bueno. No, but now they do start at eight, which is more Ocho? reasonable. Bueno. But okay, so they dropped the four gigabyte skew, which was dumb. But that has also meant that the, the price has been raised. Yeah, so time, it right? raised up a hundred bucks. So like. Technically, it's the same price as last year if you got the 8 gig. I'll take that like, as a W just because no one should be subjected to 4 gigs of RAM well, on a brand new I'm gonna, computer in 2023. I'm going to say the not. same thing I said last year and the, the year before. If you're looking for, like, the best, like, productivity laptop as, like, if you're a student mm -hmm. or, like, if for work, it is so light. Can we just point out the reason why Matt and I are a fan of the Surface Laptop Go, not to be confused with the regular Surface Laptop, yeah. is the fact that this is one of, if not the only small laptops that are premium. It is one of the most premium built laptops. Yes. yes. The downside, of course, is always just the price because it's uh, uh, $800. Yeah, it starts at $799. And then you can upgrade to a thousand dollars for 16, 16 gigs, gigs of RAM. Which, which you want 16 gigs, but that's a lot of money. Yeah. We said this about all of them and I'm gonna say it again. Yeah. But it's holding true and we're actually seeing this a little bit more like trending with it. Don't buy it right now. Like, it's, but I'm impatient, Matt. It don't buy I'm it. Impatient, because like these things are inevitably gonna go on sale. Things that like it's really hard to convey in a video of like why I actually love this thing is nice. the feel of it. Like the trackpad. The trackpad I put on par with a Mac trackpad. The battery life is amazing. It's got the three-two aspect ratio. Like this is not a gaming laptop. How? And not. like it's a productivity laptop. If you yeah. want something that is super lightweight, but you don't want to carry a tablet, the Surface Laptop Go 3 seems like a solid You're not even going to notice option. this in your backpack. So the new one is only 2.5 pounds. Matt, can you tell me about the one Surface that got announced that actually wasn't shown at all, which is the Surface Go 3. Not to be confused with Here's the Laptop the Go 3. That was so quietly announced, I didn't even know they announced it. So they did a much needed spec bump, but I actually don't know the spec because they didn't announce it at the event. So, all right, it's an N200 processor, eight gigs of RAM, which does not look Wait, like that is... They killed off four gigs entirely. Yes. 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 Goodbye, four gigs of RAM. Thank you very much. The main thing about the Surface Go 3 is that this is actually no longer on sale for regular normies. And in fact, it's now an enterprise special. Which is what it's we've been saying stuff. about it for Almost, forever. Because yeah. like, I actually had to uh, got to chat with Pete, the, the head of um, sur the Surface lineup, and basically like, What's going on with the enterprise stuff? He confirmed what we've been saying for forever. They were looking to shrink the the um the go down by like one millimeter. All their clients were like, no, we, uh, like we we built this entire infrastructure yeah. around this one form factor. When enterprises are the one who are buying these things in bulk, makes sense to say like, oh, we you have to change everything. Well, suddenly a one millimeter change, which Look, might be better for the consumer. Believe me, I know every millimeter counts. Well, I mean, for you, yeah. The most exciting Surface, though, was clearly the Surface Studio Dose. So it's a 13th gen, multiple different GPU configurations. So you can just do integrated graphics. So I don't know why you would. So there's a 4050, 4060, 4060, or an RTX 2000 if you're like into CAD and like uh, 3D rendering. It's nice to see that this laptop is getting a significant bump up in performance. My concerns with the Studio have been sort of twofold. On one hand, I think that it's a good piece of hardware, but there's some slightly odd choices, like the fact that it has a very minimal port selection and it's very heavy. One of the intri like the weird choices is that they went with micro SD card for this. It is actually larger than last year's, but not in a way that you'd notice. It's like, probably like a little extra yeah, on the bottom. Yeah. For, but the big problem I have with it, that I've always had with it, is the price. 
This thing starts at two thousand dollars. That's with integrated graphics. You want to go up to more RAM, SSD, 4060. You're pushing three thousand dollars on this thing. Here, I'm not about to justify a three thousand dollar price tag. Yeah, I, that, that's, that's just ludicrous for that. Before though, it's just like strip didn't have good GPU options or like it would max out at like lower specs period here we actually have the ability to, to get some solid specs it's a better so upgrade for sure maybe next year when the the uh, you know 5000 series cards come out and like these start to come down this is gonna be a really good laptop it's hit with the perennial surface curse of this thing is great by last generation when it's on sale yeah, like I'm still a little bit more of a fan of the little guy I, that, just personally for me, maybe, maybe not. Subscribe to the channel for an in-depth look. This is not the Go 3, this is the original Go. But Matt, it was a whole lot more than Surface. In fact, watching the event, I think it was about 30 this seconds is, on Surface yeah, and 99% like on is, AI. Yeah, so the whole event was talking about AI and then like, oh yeah, by the way, we also have these. What they did was they reintroduced or rebranded Copilot. So they're AI, AI for yeah. Windows. There's now going to be soon, uh, September 26th. So but there's also another update, which is going to be for Windows 360 or Microsoft 365. 365 right? Can which I just is like say October. this? I would wager that a lot of people watching this video are rolling their eyes at AI and are not super into it. And I will say from the outside looking in, it does feel like every couple months this year, there's been another Bing or AI tool wedged into Windows 11. Let me just like kind of level with you here. We've talked about this in the past. So I attended the event uh, earlier this year. And since then, I have actually started using Bing in an unironic way. It's really helpful to be able to quickly get some research done, to kind of ask you questions, to have it help you with things. But I have a question for you, right? Yeah. This is all being added to Windows 11, but you can tell that this was not the original plan. None of these tools have come out since this year. So it's been sort of just absolute rapid fire of Microsoft trying to integrate as much of this as fast as possible. And look, I think we can all appreciate the fact that this is a very powerful tool having AI built in to help you be a co-pilot, right? But here's my question. Yeah. They keep adding more and more and more. At what point do we just get Windows 12 AI Copilot Edition? I feel like they have to do that because right now they have all these tools that kind of feel disjointed. So far, the only thing that's really unified them is the um, the Microsoft 365 version, which is 35 bucks a month. I want to give Microsoft credit in saying that they've done a good job of doing AI tools and not yeah. AI replacement stuff. Like, here's the thing. This is going to be an awesome time to be a creator. No, no, no. We have to gatekeep. What yeah. if, what if, what if yeah, other people are. learn how to make videos and uh -oh. they put us out of a job? Here's no the more, thing. No more creating, guys. You can only subscribe to this, this channel. The only channel left that's not uh, surviving in the apocalyptic hellscape. So basically, they showed off their own version of like CapCut. This is one of those things I wish they were showing more of because this is, to me, the most interesting part of their AI here. It's very foreign for a video editor. Yeah. There is no timeline. There is no preview window. There is no Aaron. like... Yeah, we, we've replaced Aaron. He's gone. It's just a step-by-step, step. like, here's some, like, filters here. Do you like any of these? I want to cut this down to 30 seconds, to 45 seconds, to 60 seconds, and it just renders it there, and then you just have a video ready to go. So this is going to be basically just built into Windows 11 or, like, downloaded yeah. to the store or something. Correct. That's cool. One, they are really leaning into integration with iCloud. Wait, wait. Yeah. Are you saying that my Microsoft Windows Surface can work with my Apple iCloud. I got Matt. to chat with the Windows team and they're like, hey, we know that a lot of creative professionals use use iPhones. So just, they did love that I had a duo. They Yeah, they of course, you're the only I, person I, I, that I was walking building. around the event with a duo. Dude, and they're like, you are such a suck up. You know what? How much did they pay you to walk around with your Surface? Huh? Roughly one duo. <laughs> <laughs> paint. Do you remember paint? When's the last time you used paint? 2003. Exactly. They've updated Paint to be basically Photoshop. If you've seen all the generative AI, like mm -hmm. expanding out cropped photos, that's just built into Paint now. What they showed off of the AI is cool tools. You know, they're not yeah. trying to say like, hey, we're going to replace this, we're going to replace like this. It. It's like, how to make you more efficient, which, no, because I actually which appreciate is a very good part. distinction. No, no, I appreciate this part because I think for the last six months, uh, we've all been hearing AI, AI, yeah. AI. It feels like it's been kind of somewhat theoretical, right? Like everyone understands a chat bot or, you know, throw a dolly prompt and it'll spit out some watercolor or whatever. But now we're actually starting to see the fruits of the more practical demos. Well, and again, it brings me all the way back to the idea that while this stuff continues to roll out in Windows 11, I just, I've got to ask, like, at some point, so, we got to have Windows 12, right. and it's going to be AI, AI, AI. I'm going to lean into that a little bit here. One of the things that, like, they kind of showed off, but very quickly, was using Copilot to control Windows, like, arrange my Windows. And so one of the things is, like, this is, this can be voice activated. So, like, 
Cortana. So like that was cool. But here's what's not cool. Oh no, Matt, are you about to rain on my AI parade? What's wrong? What's not Privacy. Cool? Let's talk about it. So with the Office 365, all these tools that are super helpful mm -hmm. of like, hey, summarize all my emails, summarize all these documents in this folder or whatever. Mm -hmm. In order to have this happen, you, yeah. could, you could turn it off, you could turn it on. But if you want to utilize these, yeah. it has to have access to everything. There was no talk of like end-to-end -end, you know, encryption. encryption. The privacy level is yeah. a big concern for this. I kind of understand, because I'm assuming that this is going to be more of an enterprise style thing. Right. And at that point, your it's corporation running on is already- net, not so well, much. Yeah, and like, also your corporation is yeah, probably already you have your a own bunch of stuff. Yeah. Of, of Azure, yeah. But like, I think to get the most out of this, it may, I mean, obviously it makes sense, right? If you want to get the most out of it, you need to give it the most amount of information. Otherwise it's kind of flying blind. So like, I kind of get it from that perspective. If they didn't make a huge amount of talk about what they're doing to safeguard stuff, that does make me a little uh, uncomfortable about, hey, here's my contact. My email, so like, my phone, and my everything. Kind of coming back of like, it's kind of, there's two levels of co-pilot. There's the co-pilot and then 365. They didn't really talk about it because like you say, enterprises are going to have their own security measures. A lot of the features aren't available to just like the regular Windows side. So you will get the co-pilot bar, which replaces the Bing bar, which I feel like is just going to be functionally the exact same as Bing. And if you want these new cool things, you need to do the 365. And like when we see maybe Windows 12, I feel like we're gonna start seeing devices that are more tuned specifically for working with AI, as opposed to just being productivity laptops. When that happens hmm. and you can maybe do some more uh, of the stuff on on your laptop, yeah. that's when all these extra features roll out. When to you're the, running more locally than yeah. cloud-based. There are a number of language models that are being built, which is kind of like the background, yeah. the back end of a lot of this stuff. So they like, can even run on phones and stuff. But obviously they're, they're small that they have to be able to run on unlimited compute. So yeah. I guess to sum this up, we've got ourselves a nice but not massive update on the Surface lineup. And then we got a sneak peek at what Windows 11 is adding with AI tools that are legitimately useful. But almost more importantly, what might just be 11.5 at 11.83 where is clippy back because like this is it, this is literally clippy if they brought clippy I, look if they replace cortana with clippy i would actually it's just, literally that's... clippy like follow subscribe let us know in the next video what what like follow subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video that nah. we have. That's nah, not a good outro. We gotta nope. do that one again. Like, follow, subscribe. Let us know what you think about the Surface laptops. Do you think that Windows is just going more enterprise? I'm ready to throw every previous piece of hardware in the garbage. The AI future is so bright that I don't need glasses anymore.